Well, good evening from Portsmouth, where there's anger and there is shock, not just at the loss of hundreds of jobs, but what's effectively the end of five centuries of naval shipbuilding here in Portsmouth. In fact, in England, full stop. Across the UK, almost 1,800 jobs will go at BAE, more than half of them here in this city. MPs and unions have described it as devastating and warned that it could put the country's defences at risk. In a moment, we'll be reporting from the Clyde in Glasgow, where jobs are going as well, but warships will continue to be built. But first, here's our political editor, Gary Gibbon, on how the news was received in the dockyards and in Westminster. This section of aircraft carrier will now be amongst the very last products of Portsmouth's 500-year shipbuilding tradition. It was floated up to Scotland to be joined with other sections. Britain's shipbuilding capacity was always going to contract after the massive project constructing two aircraft carriers. BAE announced today that it will shrink in Scotland and finish altogether in Portsmouth. 940 jobs will go in Portsmouth by the end of next year. 835 jobs will go mostly in Glasgow, but also in Rosyth near Dunfermline and Filton near Bristol. Workers in Glasgow were given the rest of the day off after the announcement in Portsmouth too, where there was some resentment, but as some saw it, they'd got the rough end of the deal. I think it's mostly political. Uh, most, most of the Scottish workers are going to be quite happy now, but everything's been taken away from down this yard. So it was built on shipbuilding, ship repair. It's a disgrace, really. We were sort of expecting it, and it's a sad day for shipbuilding in this town. What can you do? Two Hampshire MPs said many of their constituents would see this as a decision driven by the coalition's desire to defeat the campaign for Scottish independence in next year's referendum. Yes, yeah, Scotland have got the good deal. We, we've lost all our jobs at the expense of Scottish jobs and no one in Portsmouth is happy about that at all. I mean, it's, it's you know, completely unacceptable as far as, as far as Portsmouth are concerned. Is it right to think that perhaps jobs have been sacrificed in Portsmouth to help well, win the referendum well, in Scotland? In a perfect world, I would hope that wasn't the case, but I can't believe that it didn't feature somewhere in people's thinking, because this can't have been just a BAE decision. It was the too... Government says it was. Well, I, governments would say that, wouldn't they? The industry insists Glasgow, with two dockyards either side of the Clyde, always had the advantage. The government said it would now build three new patrol vessels in Glasgow to keep the docks busy until the planned order of 13 Type 26 frigates is formally signed. We want our Royal Navy to have the best and most modern ships and the best technology. And that means we will go on building warships on the Clyde. We'll be announcing three new offshore patrol vessels, keeping that yard busy rather than paying it to remain idle as the last government proposed. Government sources say the bigger contract for 13 frigates is dependent on the referendum result. If Scotland votes for independence, the Navy will not be building ships in Scotland again. The SNP government says that's a hollow threat. It has always been the case that the Clyde is the best place to build these ships. The investment that has taken place in the Clyde yards over recent years, this particular skill mix that there is on the Clyde, means that Clyde is the most effective, I think that was the words being used this morning, the most effective place to build these ships. It would have been unthinkable for the government to close the Clyde shipyards in the run-up to the referendum. The truth may be that it was never faced with that choice. BAE didn't want to close them anyway. The government hopes today will underline its case that Scotland's better off in the union, while not alienating English voters who think they've paid the price.